Hey, what's up everyone? So, I guess I got 500 subscribers now. Wow. Now this has been a little bit of a long journey because I've been trying to figure out YouTube for a while now and I think I've kind of figured it out. So, anyway, today as an added bonus, I'm going to be responding to your comments. And I'm also going to talk about my immediate future goals and uh, go on from there, I guess, right? So let's get to it. So when someone insults me, right, and they say, hey, man, you suck, or this, that, and the other, um, I, I usually just pin that comment, and um, I put it up there. And I'm going to respond to a lot of your comments, a lot of things that I see kind of going on, and... I want to see what I want to see what you guys uh, what you guys think as well. Anyway, I think a lot of the hate comes from a couple of different places. One, you know, maybe they're looking for a certain type of content and they're frustrated because they're not finding it. That's possible. But the other one that I think is, I think they're just hating. I have literally, I have three people. It doesn't matter what video I make, pretty much. If they find my video, they unlike my video. I don't care. Unlike my video. I could care less, right? Like, who really cares if you unlike a video? Like, to me, like, that's the dumbest thing. I don't care. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. You're only helping my algorithm. Go for it. All right. So let's go ahead and get to those comments, shall we? I thought about doing this on like a a a case by case basis, but I decided against that because that would take forever. All right, I don't know where this. Uh, I thought of this scene from the Bad Boys too. Um, I said I I watched the clip. It was kind of funny, but I oh I see because the guy looked. It like supposedly looked older than he was. Okay, I got it. Love your point of view. Yep. That was the uh, MX Linux XFCE quick stable, easy to use. Yeah. Um, I love MX Linux, by the way. I think it's great. Um, I tried Linux in 2004 for the first time, and I've always been using it since then, and I'm not a programmer. People should use Linux. I couldn't agree more. Fedora is greater than 100 times Ubuntu. Yeah, it's hard to argue there. Um, I'm, using, uh, I'm using Fedora right now, so that should tell you something. Cool video. Subscribed. Thanks, bro. I love it. Void Linux and Slackware are usually more stable than vanilla Debian, which is praised for its stability, which is a bit shocking, but that's how it is. By the way, by the way, hate it. There's no Linux channels to teach people in depth troubleshoot why their hardware does not work to their full potential. In my case, I cannot abandon Windows because my printer does not work properly on Linux and no one wants to help me figure out the in depth way of what's wrong um on forums etc there's most people who answer questions are not the actual hardcore driver developers so you get real superficial help so with printers it's really interesting um the easiest way to deal with printers in linux is just find a printer that works now if you have to have this printer there's a few things that you could do. Um, and you said that you can't find anything on the forums. Um, have you consulted ChatGPT and see what ChatGPT has to say? Chat, I use ChatGPT, Claude. I, I use a lot of AI stuff to figure things out. And so far, it really hasn't let me down. But I do understand because that would actually be a really good idea for a channel um the only thing is is 
I am an expert on certain hardware, like, uh, for example, NVIDIA. I've never, well, today, I haven't owned a printer in 20 years. Like, anytime I need something printed, and it's so rare, I, you know, I have a place across the street from my house that prints for, like, uh, half a peso, because I live in Mexico. So, yeah. Um, I, I would like to be able to help you more on that. Um, if you consulted something like chat GPT and kind of could narrow down, you know, at least what the problem is, I think I can help you, but, um, I, I have to know what, I have to know what certain tests and things say in order to be able to uh, troubleshoot it further, because it's not working. It may simply not be compatible, but then again, it just may be that you're not talking to the right daemon or something like that. And those are the things that I would have to know, but I could probably help you out. That would be a cool video to make. And, you know, hardware is one of those deals. It's really hard um, sometimes. Like, I'll give you an example. My laptop right here, it's a MSI Cyborg. And it's something that I found at Costco the last time I was in the States and had the right price tag. And MSI used to have really good Linux laptops. They used to make really good Linux laptops. Not so much anymore. <laughs> I had to figure out a lot of things, but boy. Okay. Um, oh, and by the way, um, Void and Slackware are certainly more stable than Vanilla Debian, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, actually, I think they're all about the same, um, but I do think that Void and Slackware are slightly more stable. Uh, I noticed that Void, their installer, doesn't work anymore, I don't think. They're, um, like, if the Incurse's installer shows up, but it doesn't actually do what it's supposed to. Uh, so I think you're supposed to install this from source or something. It's kind of interesting. I'm going to have to look more into that. My God, the audio is super low. I have the volume on max and it still sounds like it's only 50%. I think you need to amp that output gain. Yeah. Um, so the problem with that is it picks up so much stuff. So I have a couple of things that I can do that are on the table. One of them that I'm considering is setting up my mic to uh, be used with Ardour or correcting it with our door thing. Either one of those I could probably do. Those are definitely valid options that I'm certainly considering. Okay, your PIP covered the most interesting part for me, namely the digital clock widget on the panel. Maybe I downloaded some corrupt ISO image file, KDE spin, but under boxes, Debian 12, and also when I booted my laptop from USB bootable stick, the bloody clock is not appearing in the default panel. Oh, okay. And I don't add a new default panel. It's still the same. Yes, if I add the widgets analog, that is working. Otherwise, I agree with you. The latest Solus OS 4.6, worth a try. Secure boot working, Wayland. You can enable every, you know, like flat pack and snap. Uh, Plasma 6.1, although some say that this sixth version is just worthless upgrade from 5.27 one basically no user benefits plus resource hungry i don't remember if this distro has firewall enabled by default because on some distros firewall is not enabled by default you need to manually install or start the firewall conehead developers and the year is 2024 almost 2025 yeah, it is. But um, that's kind of why I put it there. I, I think that this is definitely a distro that people want to keep a lookout for. Um, bro, everyone 
everyone's minds makes connections faster and they can communicate them verbally unless you unless they're like try semi 19 or something yeah true enough um so basically uh, you know i just wanted to kind of explain kind of what was going on in my mind and at least try to recapture some of because i know that i kind of lost um i had lost a little bit um i lost a few of my viewers because they're like wait a minute here he's saying he's not even gonna like like the this is barely an installable distro it's barely worth worth looking at and then he's like hey i think i'm going to use this and i didn't you know really flush out what it was that i was seeing at the moment but it was actually like a real real moment for me because i had realized that i've been hating on a lot of projects without any sort of reason for it like i think there are certain things in linux that i'm always gonna hate and i think that's fair right like i'm always gonna hate the nanotech stutter like you know i got the vim key bindings you know hardwired to my fingers am i going to i mean seriously like like why on god's green earth would i use um nano just doesn't make sense you know it's like Okay, I'll be sitting there hitting the escape key and then like double capital Z to get out of a file and it's not working. It's like, and then it's like, okay, I got a bunch of capital C's at the bottom. I'm like, eh. yeah. I think there are things I always hate, but I, I also think that there are a lot of things. Um, that maybe i wouldn't hate like this i don't think i hate this and um i was really interested i'm not interested in using wayland as my daily driver because i use tiling window manager but it could be that i end up using a wayland tiling window manager the thing is is i like xmonad and dwm inspector wm and bspwm so much I'm not willing to part ways with those. Now, if I can install Wayland desktops together with those, I'm on board. It's that simple. So I'm not wanting to do that either. And that's another thing. I I don't hate Wayland. I think Wayland's a really good project. And I always like looking at like everything. Bro, need to redo sound. Can't hear you. Yeah, can we already uh all right, so this guy wrote a book here. Um, uh, but he had a lot of really good information and a lot of things that um, basically uh, detailing his experience with using Solus and combining that with um, different, you know, like they used to use the Mate version, but the Mate version was too resource hungry. And so and took a lot longer to install so they kind of junked it but yeah very very good info okay so he writes thanks for your reply looking forward to future videos especially solace or some memory usage different uh desktop environments from the same distro base that's uh like you could compare mint editions and then do the same for solace editions um here's the thing so memory i i just have to say memory is a very very poor metric to compare you could sit there and here's why because vanilla xfce is going to be about the same between distros these days um like if you take a look at fedora or um mint or ubuntu or void or whatever it is you're talking about they're going to be very similar um and that's not the case for other in other metrics like for example i'll give you a really good example 
I was using I was using Arc Linux and I was using Plasma 6 on my actual laptop. Okay. And it wasn't bad. It wasn't horrible anyway. But I don't know. It just it wasn't firing on all cylinders. And I fired up Plasma 6 on Solus on a virtual machine and it seemed to be working better. The real metric would be why isn't Plasma 6 working on real hardware as well as Solus is on my actual virtual machine? That's a really good metric. That's a really good yardstick. Say that you use a browser and you use the same browser, but you know, maybe. You know, you got three tabs open on one, and you are, it's like this on my other on your other one. Um, I don't think that you, there's so many different things that I, I don't think you know you could. I think one metric that you can compare is memory, but I think there are so many better uh, metrics. And actually, if anything, I would actually compare what you get for how much the memory uh, usage is. Like, um, how many things are running in the background and that sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of different metrics that I think would be uh, better, I think. Enjoy the content, in my opinion, is very appropriate and healthy to question and or revise our past views, current prejudice in various fields with such experience as we hopefully gain greater insight into how things people in the world and of linux of course works as a long-term crunch bag crunch bang and debian user but got pulled over to the dark side when i started using an iphone pro for photography and facetime with my family members that led to the purchase of various apple devices and eventually a 27 inch intel imac in 2020 I'm transitioning back to Linux using Debian on older machines, saving it from premature demise in a landfill in some distant part of the world. It is exciting for me to see how much Linux has progressed since my decade break. Most things just seem to work quite well out of the box. You still have to go through loops and install some proprietary firmware to get the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to work. I have also had problems getting my input software working for Japanese language input. This should be achievable with a few mouse clicks in the settings as it is in proprietary OSs. I'm sure that I am missing some issues and the question is more nuanced like life in general. Yep, definitely. But hey, that was actually a really good comment, you know, revisiting past prejudices is always nice. And I do have strong opinions about things. There's no question about it. I think that's obvious. And I'm, I'm basically, um, I'm definitely guilty of that. Volume's too low. Looks like Kubuntu. It does. I use Zorn Core. Love it. I do plan on checking out Soren. I haven't seen it in 10 years. I couldn't tell you anything about that anymore. I'm a bit nervous of the future of Solus. Not that there will be development issues like in the past, but the fact that there will be rebased on Serpent Linux, it is another distro from Ike Doherty. I'm sure it'll be fine, just as it is now. But I don't know what kind of changes will happen in the background. Well, Ike doesn't have anything to do with this project, so I'm thinking probably not many. Ike is a really cool guy. Um, anybody who ever has a chance to talk it, uh, with Ike will find that he's a very friendly guy. And I'll, I will say this. The issues that were so-called issues in the past, I will say... Um, I haven't really dug into it, but I can say this with a fair amount of certainty. I think Ike Doherty, now I've never worked with him, but about 10 years ago, I did 
kind of see some of his um his pull requests and different things i i looked at their git that's how i judge things i i don't see a lot of people think i i judge things superficially dude i'm a developer i i'm gonna look at your 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 git history that's how i judge you i don't judge you on how good or how bad your desktop environment looks or if you have the wrong wallpaper or something that's not how i judge you i judge you on what i see in your get and ikea is like the easiest person in the world to work with i'm just gonna say that right out the gate i i i would be very shocked if someone had a problem with ikea i would be shocked i'm just gonna say that um all right big mac use a big mac what the yeah maybe it wasn't the purpose of the video but now i don't like all distributions there's always some bug or small thing that makes me question the sanity of the linux world full of magic foundations and decisions that i don't appreciate desktop environments just battle each other in ram usage not used ram is blah blah not in performance i don't see any cooperation in communities just drama and king who does not always make good decisions the only defense in this situation is forking and waiting a year or two with hope that someone will change dude this is so oh my god this is so true oh my god if you look and, it's, and this actually ties into what i was just saying if you look at the um get issues uh, in the gnome foundation for example this is a perfect example not so much kde those people at plasma are really easy to work with um but in gnome if you look at their git their git history oh my god it is just riddled with people who are just insufferable I, i'm just saying that it it's i should make a video on it sometime um honestly i i really should because i think it would be a fascinating subject i haven't uh looked at gnome's uh git history in a long time but I can tell you that um, there's always drama with them. I don't think there's always drama in the um, in the Solus project. They do like things a certain way. I don't get the idea that they're a bunch of Nazis. So why would someone keep their valuable software on someone else's server without a local backup? You don't trust any human that much like that. I might as well keep my valuable possessions in your basement. Then if something happens to your house, then I can be mad at you because I won't have a copy of it at my house. Okay, so that was about like when my dad lost all his CDs on on iTunes. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know what I think about this because here's the thing. I hardly ever save anything on CD. I save everything in the cloud these days, for the most part. I either I either save it on an actual hard drive or I save it on CD. And you could actually save it on, like, say, maybe like Blu-ray. Um, that might be an option. All right. I think there are use cases for everything has its pros and cons regarding pricing i would say apple devices are pretty competitively priced except if you want the pro versions their upgrade prices are ridiculous and it's even worse than here in europe with bigger taxes than in america i calculated once i can fly to new york buy a base macbook pro and fly it back and still have money left over well that's that's incredible my reasons for getting Mac was pretty simple. They're silicon chips. I, I am impressed with their silicon chips. I, I'm not going to lie. I would actually get a Macintosh laptop, but I would wipe it and put Linux on it. That's what I would be interested in. Yeah. I was living on the go. I needed a laptop. The silicon Mac had a 
great battery life and running on battery it gave no compromises to the power of the chip since their upgrade prices are nuts i just got the base m2 air it was a bit worried about the eight gigabytes of ram since i'm a very heavy user my desktop has 32 gigabytes and i constantly max it out so i'm looking to upgrade to 64. thankfully a gig gigabytes of ram wasn't such a big a problem as i thought it would be i i know it swaps a lot since i've looked at the task manager but honestly i can't feel the swaps at all so i don't really care anymore now it are there are silicon window laptops which are very nice yeah probably all right so this guy kind of wrote a book but basically telling me that you know he basically is looking into linux stuff and um there's one big problem or one big point that he made um he's looking into linux and something he did something with itunes that basically you know kind of protected him which is cool um i think he used an older version of itunes or something if i remember right i can't read the whole thing like my friend is um but my friend is the same like windows read the windows terms and you will find this one sentence that sounds something like we will contact trusted whistleblower if we scan some suspicious data on pc that's not true at all um that's not true they literally just 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 removed without any you know they didn't give him any warning even if apple deleted contents from cd he'll still have the physical cds yeah okay do you save cds because i don't i'm not a collector like that and i don't think cds are a collector item like you know i could understand if it was vinyl but no people are not um, understandable of all the use cases i use three mean osses mac for productivity linux for fun stuff and if i want to change things up windows for gaming and only gaming the big qual the high quality of apple hardware and ecosystem around it does provide an excellent user experience i don't doubt that i use i use linux on everything but because i've been using linux forever and i love it i love the whole open source thing i use windows game mac for my laptop on the go and, and non-3d stuff and linux for for my pi and nas and docker yeah that's a good idea uh all right mic is really low yeah whatever okay buying a buying a pc parts from taiwan chinese manufacturers are ethical what you really think buying a pc parts and build your own computer is some moral righteous thing over a mac you're weird well here's the thing a there's a lot of things that mac manufactures in china so i don't know what your point is the other thing is this person that i i really i really hope that you're not racist i really do i really hope you're not racist because that that sounds very racist to me because what what would be the problem buying taiwanese parts T taiwan is our ally they're a democracy i i honestly don't get that i get like say hey yeah i i don't want to buy anything from china yeah i don't either and in fact i hate the ccp you know the Com chinese communist party i hate them they are a very big threat to world peace and a lot of other things. So yeah, I I very much dislike China. No question. And I could understand. But your own your own comment just shows your ignorance here. You are so ignorant about this because you know Mac makes their silicon chips i believe in china
must have your wallpapers new to the channel just subscribe would be good thank you everyone who subscribes only 15 years double that for me okay uh, here's a guy who started out with slackware <laughs> how to fix audio on mac <laughs> that's a that's good uh typical windows elitist yeah and somebody like corrects me yeah it's the mac user who's usually elitist <laughs> no doubt so i kind of showed them that the only place i ever use windows is in a virtual box you got it confused though <laughs> uh the Mac cult there are usually the elitist. Yeah, I am elitist though. Um, as a software developer and somebody who knows a lot about computers, yeah, I'm a little elitist. I hate Macintosh and Windows. They are the enemy. And people who are like are normies and they're using them, I, I don't I don't lord that over them or try to make them feel guilty. But am I a little elitist about it? Yeah, sure. I'm a I'm a Linux power user. So I don't know why I wouldn't be a little elitist. I think that's only natural. Just like if you're a Mac power user, I, I would just I would expect you to be a little elitist about it, maybe. And so I kind of so he's like, oh, okay, if Mac users are elitist, why do you find Windows and Android people whine the most, huh? I've never heard a, a, an Android person ever whine about. I don't even know what they're supposedly whining about. Maybe I'm living, you know, under a rock, but I don't find them elitist at all. Uh, I think that's pretty, pretty comical, to be honest. I only use Linux more precisely. GNU Linux. Have you ever heard of it? That was my response. I might use BSD sometime in the future. Yes, I prefer I prefer Android to iPhone, but that's more for philosophical reasons about ethics than it is about actual technology. Good one. My mic settings will get better. Your knowledge of computers will not, unfortunately. I still stand by that, by the way. I'm not watching a video that sounds like the audio has been run through a guitar overdrive pedal. Well, it hadn't, but okay. Oh, the audio and video needs a Mac touch because, good God, this is horrible content. Yeah, I think the information is good. Um, you know, there have been more than one um, one channel where, like, the uh, audio quality or the video quality was suspect that you know, have made, you know, have gone pretty far because the information was good. And I think the information is good here too. Um, bro, have you owned an Apple Silicon Mac? Well, you know, yeah, I haven't. See, and so this person obviously didn't even look at, um, didn't even look at my video. He's he's commenting because I'm saying I'll never own a Mac, and he automatically assumes that I think that somehow I don't know about Apple Silicon Macs. He thinks that's the thing that will make me change my mind, right? And it's obvious he didn't. I think you need a lesson in audio quality and video editing. I don't. There's a lot of people giving me some random, you know, uh, advice, right? I'm thinking of switching to a MacBook Pro from Zephyrus G14. I don't know what that is. Um, been a programmer and Windows Power user for years. And now besides gaming, I just don't see a point of using Windows over Mac OS. Had a lot of issues with Windows 11 and times just crashed altogether. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, dealing with drivers is another inconvenience. Just the other day, my friend's entire Windows installation got destroyed by a Windows update, so I had to reinstall it for him. And then we had to get the network drivers. No kidding. 
Um, I had a um I had a laptop for a family member. I ended up actually installing Linux for this very reason. Um it was a while ago, it was a few months, like um probably a year ago. Um same thing. And I just installed uh I what did I install? I think I installed like MX Linux or something maybe. Okay. You know, and M4 MacBook enough. I own AirPods. I remember how repairable these things are and how priced. So this person is looking at it as, a, you know, monetarily. Apple is good at shooting itself in the foot. They come across as exceedingly devious or even worse than Microsoft because at least Microsoft does not make the device. Apple could have dom domination of home computer market just as they've done with smartphones, but they just keep being devious instead. Yeah. Most interesting. I'm a huge KDE fan. Yeah. Me too. I do like KDE and. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm so used to using tiling window managers, I think I would probably use uh, Plasma. And Plasma 6 looks really awesome. Macs have pros and cons like everything else. What's important is uh, consumers have choices, but never choose a computer based on the way you choose them. And the fact that we both have the ability to choose what we like is a good thing. I didn't understand this question when, or this comment, I mean, I didn't really understand. Um, I usually look at like the specs, like what I'm getting for the price. I just kind of weigh it out and I look for also like Linux compatibility and that sort of thing. But that's, those are basically the uh, only thing that I look for. I'm not looking for to get even the best deal. I'm I'm looking. I kind of am, I suppose. But you can just use a Mac and put everything on external drives. I have a Mac that still runs iTunes since I never upgraded the OS. No issues there. If anything, if anything, a lot once you you make more of a Windows rent than an OS X one, in my opinion. Well, a lot of this could be applied to Windows for sure. But so if you had an external drive that had like an older version of iTunes and you were basically accessing that, I don't know how that would work. Honestly, I never thought about that. That's actually a really good idea, possibly. Um, although I will say the one thing that I would never do is have like a new machine and not ever update it. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like that is literally the dumbest thing. And I'll tell you why, because there are security uh, issues and different things. And when you don't update your machine and you connect to the internet, there's all kinds of exploits that happen. And um, yeah, it's, it's not a good thing. Uh, people, I don't think people can necessarily gain access, but they can definitely, they'll be sniffing your computer for information. So there's that. Learn first how to, uh, how to work with audio and then teach the world about Mac. Well, okay. Well, my video will get better with every video, but your poor excuse of an idea of an operating system will not. Oh, forcing, forcing people into your belief is silly. I use a couple of Macs, uh, Linux, Mac OS, and a couple of Windows. Just pick whatever you want and what makes you happy. I don't recommend any device without proper thinking about actual scenarios. So I kind of insulted this guy here. Like, let's slow down for the mentally impaired here. You understand that part of my channel, at least, is to be educational on the differences in technologies and platforms, right? 
I'm being educational. But I'm also telling a story. Yeah, for sure. So maybe don't be an a-hole before you comment. So what is this thing between knowing audio or knowing Mac? Mac actually sucks with audio. That's actually true. Um, Mac does not have Jack. And Jack is so awesome with uh, audio recording in Linux. Um, it's one of those things. And actually, I'm kind of surprised Macintosh hasn't tried to steal it. Like they steal everything else, right? So, yeah. Um, had a beefy gaming laptop with 32 gigabytes of RAM, NVIDIA, RTX 2060, Intel i7, 9750. It's great for gaming, but would constantly crash with music, software, and editing video on it was awful. On Apple M1, it's been the single most powerful computer I've ever owned. I've heard this. The um, See, I don't use Premiere Pro, but P Premiere Pro does not work nice on, on anything, right? Um, I'm, I'll, I'll just say Premiere Pro does not barely... It works good on, I guess, Mac uh, for some reason, but it doesn't work nice on Windows. Um, definitely not. It's not available on Linux, so there's that. Um, um, and applicable as applicable for everything in the world, it depends. We're not residing in a dark cave programming. But we're early adopters who enjoys the newest tech, which is why we obtain new Apple stuff annually with the greatest joy. Well, maybe, but again, um, you obviously didn't watch my video. I've never been happier with a computer decision I've ever made than I have been switching to Linux. I would never go back. You're here. Looks like to me you are a distro hopper. Get a type one hypervisor and you can try. Well, I do use uh, I do use Burt Manager, so I don't use Oracle VirtualBox much, but I do use Burt Manager. Mac is just one single soldered board, expensive, loose, all the board and short circuit burn hype of all hardware. In Brazil, I'll call it tripa, one warm shaped object. <laughs> That's interesting. Tripa in Spanish is, is intestine, so I'm wondering if that's not like the same. Any phone. Um, distro hopping is for fun. Customizing desktop is for fun. I keep a computer for work. It has an X Mint installed. It has some minor tweaks for productivity purpose. Nothing fancy. I've tried. Um, using Mint OS for my daily driver. It's really hard. NixOS, the final boss. I really uh, want to sit down with NixOS. I've, I've looked at it a little bit, but it was really apparent really quick. The way they install software is a little different. So because you're still kind of com uh, compiling it from a binary source, Kind of like Gen 2, although it doesn't have like the whole Gen 2 feel where it takes like three hours to compile a piece of software. Um, it's really interesting to me. And I do want to sit down. I actually think probably there's a 99% chance that I wind up in NixOS probably within the next year. Cache OS never let me down. I'm not sure about that one, but that's a definitely uh, one I would like to check out. Simply get a Mac. Everything just works. It'll allow you to focus on things that you actually want to do instead of tweaking the OS day in, day out. Remember, life is short. No thanks. Uh, hipster yuppie. <laughs> I don't do soldered RAM and CPUs. And if you watch my next video, I make it clear why I dislike Macintosh. Some of us value free software, and Macintosh is the antithesis to that. Macintosh has made me, had me from 1983 to 2009. That's a true story. Uh, I distro hop because no desktop environment is fully ready for me. 
that. I dry them and I set them up and reboot to Windows because I have to. I just like to keep myself up to date with Linux desktop progress. I think mental help ADHD is the reason for distro hopping. Yeah, probably. Um, I live in a terminal in WSL or WSL on Windows. Point and click interface is so much worse. Yeah, probably. I try terminal command line only with your cell phone. It is a hundred point. Uh, it's a hundred percent point and click, right? Yeah, probably. Phone is for calling people or maybe typing a text message here and there, I'm not doing things. <laughs> Still did a few repairs on my phone via terminal apps. Each point and click crap that is a very comfy. A Bluetooth keyboard in the backpack helps a lot though. Since I got one, it's good enough. Yeah. Um I I try I honestly don't do anything on my cell phone like that. The only thing, sometimes I study on my cell phone. Because I have uh, Obsidian. So, yeah. I used Debian, then Kubuntu, because I needed newer packages. Then I moved to Fedora and stayed here because Kubuntu killed itself. NixOS cured me. It's one hell of a rabbit hole. Good luck and have fun. This got me to one of my most favorite backgrounds for filming a video in. Nice dark room with some lighting illuminating you just enough. Experimented with vanilla OS. And if it weren't for the Force Gnome, I'd probably stick with it if they give you options. Still looking for that perfect distribution. I get sick of Linux and still have to just chill in the Windows hot tub for a bit. I absolutely hate to say it, but for the most part, Windows works. I know the disadvantages. I know much of the world is powered on Linux, and it could be the very purpose for lightweight scenarios, much more versatile than Windows. I just can't do it all as good. Small edit Windows is my predominant system on a daily basis. Most things just work fine. You can't install minimal Windows setups on, on anything, though. Just like Linux it has surprised me on what it can boot up on. Linux has a huge advantage for things like servers, hosting, web pages, and such. You can have a very lightweight system even compared to a Windows server setup that has no desktop. Yeah, no kidding. Can you do Android gaming on Linux videos for us? Okay, that was actually kind of an interesting one. I'm, I might try to do that. I'm not going to, like, really be... I'm not a gamer, okay, so... Uh, we all felt some kind of punishment when our beloved Ubuntu lost its identity for some time, switching from this or that. I uh, firmly decided to keep a particular track, but hey, that's the beauty of Linux. I switched to Kubuntu and changed my life. The point is, the problem though is the fact that the particular life MS Visual Studio 2022 brings my dinner to the table. Dude, when you have a job, like, yeah, I get it. Um, Add NixOS to your mutable distro list. Yes. A very nice distro comes with a lot of reading on Nix. So I tried BlendOS too, but aside for the same reason. Yeah, NixOS solved all the issues. Mixing up to date older packages, switching up from GNOME to Hyperland to KDE back less than five minutes without giving. If I find out like on NixOS, like I think I might be able to do, like if I can switch from X window managers to, if I can switch between X window managers and Wayland window managers, and I think I might be able to do that. Um, basically, the way I think I would do it is, I would probably just, um, I would just probably recompile the nix package for like my for my x window managers and then when i wanted to use wayland i would just recompile that that sounds like a really really good solution that i am definitely open to um yeah it did make a lot of people angry <laughs> a lot of people commented it didn't even watch the video 
No, what do you choose instead of Linux? He, he didn't even watch watch the video. Oh yeah, MS DOS. I've used that. Um, Amigo OS. Yeah. Um, Just because you can tweak Linux doesn't mean you can use it. My 10 year old girl just used blah, blah, blah. That was some really good comments. I'm, I'm missing it. Uh, yeah, that switched to Unity 8, then, then GNOME got me off the main Ubuntu just or Yeah, that. Dude, that really pissed a lot of people off. Uh, I'm at the stage where I just want a distro that I don't have to fiddle with out of the box. Yeah, pretty much. Zorin, it, I think Zorin is probably a pretty good project for that. What the hell did I just watch? Watched? I'm just speak English, buddy. Don't do me like this, bro. That is a side addressing mic. It is, and I explained kind of what happened, but yeah. I I finally figured out the issue, so my video is going to be, my audio is going to be a lot better. And I'm going to do some other things. Garbage people use garbage distros. Linux welcomes everyone. Yeah. All right. There's a good place to just kind of segue out. Shut up, please. Woohoo! Mm. Hey, I, this seems like when I first read it, I didn't read it that closely, but this is obviously, obviously an ESL uh, douchebag, which I have no problem with ESL. I'm an English teacher. Um, I was an English teacher for 10 years here in Mexico, so I, I don't care about that. The only wankers are people from across the pond who comment on videos they didn't watch. <laughs> no kidding. Besides, my video is more about the abuse of the proprietary software. Yeah, Macintosh is proprietary, right? Do they abuse their customers? They do, don't they? Yeah, so who's the idiot? I'm going to pin this for everyone. To see. Yeah. Yeah, I do hate Macintosh. I hate it with a passion. If you forced me to use a Mac, I just wouldn't. Even it, like... I guess if I w if you were like giving me a developer job and you said here here's your computer well there's not much I can do about that um, I would insist on at least a Mac at the very least so that I can install NeoVim. All right, so I want to talk really quickly about the future goals of this YouTube channel. So my First uh, goal is to get monetized. That is the first and foremost. That is my goal. I need to get monetized as soon as possible. So what am I doing to do that? So I'm uh, posting ranking videos, um, videos that people want to see. And sometimes it's not with the conclusion that people want to see or even like you know, like the format that people want to see so far. And there's a few reasons for this. Um, I'm working on a lot of different things. I'm working on the audio. I'm working on different things to basically get this up and going and to basically have better quality. Very soon, though, very soon, I'm going to have distro reviews and I have a lot of ideas about editing and different things that i'm going to start employing to really make some of these videos really pop out i really want to build a community and i want to build a community of people that are like my age or you know that are you know anywhere from like you know maybe 35 onwards for the most part that um use a computer right Give them ideas of things that they can do uh, to basically keep up with the TikTok generation, right? Now, you're going to keep up with them. You're not going to keep up with them the same way. You're going to be able to do a lot of the same things on your computer, though. And the other thing is, is for development, right? I want to show development stuff 
here on this channel. And the other thing is, is I just want to hire an editor as soon as possible. I want to be able to hire an editor and do this full time. That is pretty much my goal. So again, 500 subscribers, everyone. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate any love that I've been given lately. And I can't wait to get into future videos and make really good content for y'all. Okay? So anyway, peace.